Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, it's going to be a short video, I wanted to show you something that I was doing here. So basically, I had a student contact me last night via email, a former student, I mean, and they have made a website here, uh, jssconstructionllc.com. Here's the website right up here. And in the search engines, are not finding it yet. He's inquiring to see if I would take a quick look and let him know. So I just wanted to show you a couple things that I might do. Now, I don't know how recently he made this website or uploaded it, published it. So it could be relatively recent, like in the last few days. And uh, getting on a Google search engine ranking um, definitely is going to take longer than a few days. However, how long does it take? It's kind of a mystery sometimes. Some sites get listed um, within within a week or two. Others could take months. It all depends. They have been a lot faster over the past number of years, so if it went more than two weeks without being listed, then I'd be a little bit more concerned. But yeah, maybe he just published this, you know, five days ago or something. Who knows? So I'm looking at the site, but before I really look into this site, let me show you something that I might do first. And so I would head over to Google and I'm going to do a site search. In fact, you can kind of see it's in my history. I've actually done this a little bit earlier. Oddly enough, I actually did this on my tablet. Um, and it looks like it's keeping it on there. So I'm going to just do a Google search. But notice I'm doing site colon. And then I'm typing in the, uh, the URL there. And I'm getting the same result here that I got in my uh, tablet search. And basically, hey, um, zero results. So this does let us know that this site is definitely not uh, listed in, in Google. And I'll give you a comparison here. If I did site colon cucc.edu, we're going to start to see a bunch of results. So 15,000. So I'm looking at basically just COCC web pages right now. And we can see that there's at least 15,000 pages um, or around 15,000 pages that are listed with Google search engine. Now, it doesn't mean those are all the pages because you can make a web page that doesn't get listed at all. There's ways to do that. But if I go back, and I guess I'll just type this in again. What was it? Um, JSS construction, LLC.com. Okay, and so we get this. So this does confirm what the student was finding is this site is not listed. Okay. Now, in order to, actually before, something else I, I did too. Let me go back to their site. Something else I checked on is I wanted to see if he had a robots.txt file. So I did a slash robots.txt. This is a, uh, a special text file that you can write and put in your page that gives instructions to search engine crawlers. And some web developers, they'll put a little note in their robots text file in order to prevent the site from getting listed. And they may do this while they're working on a website, but when the site's ready to go live, some web develop developers will forget to take that line out and they keep the site from getting indexed. I've been saying the word listed. It's better if I say the word indexed. We wanna get our site indexed by um, Google and other search engines. And I'll give you another example of a robots.txt file. Let's see, does COCC have one? Slash robots.txt. And uh, there we go. So that's a robots text file. It's nothing too fancy. Basically, it's saying all user agents, user agents are the various search engine crawlers and bots. They want to disallow certain folders, which makes sense. There's nothing shocking about that. There's no need for Google, in, uh, for instance, to, uh, to index the navigation menu include file. That's what that little dot .inc is. <laughs> There's no need for them to index the alerts folder within the emergency folder. So, um, so that's what's going on there. And then they also mention a sitemap. So that's a, a very, that's a pretty common and simple robots.txt file, robots.txt file that you'll see on a lot of uh, bigger websites. And even on a small business website, I think it's perfectly reasonable to have something like that. However, he doesn't have one, but that's not really the problem. I think this site is just pretty darn new. Now, the other way, in order for Google to know about your brand new website, well, it has to follow a hyperlink. So if how is Google going to know unless it can follow a hyperlink from one existing page on the index to your page? So that's why it can take quite a bit longer, maybe for a small business to get listed. So Google uh, you know, has some options for us. One of them is over here. It's basically search.google.com. Now I'm logged into my account. And I've got a few little personal websites that don't get much traffic at all. 
But basically, this is one way that you can speed up the process and get indexed by Google, the Google search bots. And of course, once you get listed by them, you're going to start to get listed by all the other services too, because they all kind of piggyback on each other. So um, basically, I would just create, there's, there's an option on here, I'm sure, for creating a new site. Maybe I click on this drop-down menu. Yeah, there we go. Add property. So basically, you would just go to search.google.com, log in with your primary Google account, and of course, you can add a property on here. And often what it's going to do, it's going to give you a little chunk of code, maybe a little JavaScript, a little chunk of JavaScript that you can put on your web page. And then you re-upload that. And then, of course, you give them the, your, your web address. And uh, next thing you know, it's going to start to crank away, probably within 24 hours, 48 hours, stuff like that. And you'll probably start to be listed much sooner because now Google, you've told Google specifically about your web page. Now, as a small business, this construction company, they, in addition, they might also do this. So this is google.com slash business. And although I'm not as familiar with this one, Business searching, local searching is really a hot area for Google and other search engines because this is a construction company. It's not reasonable that everybody in the country or everybody in the world wants to find this construction company in Central Oregon. So having a local business um, listing with Google is a good way to go. So what I would do here is I would sign in, and I've never even signed in to this particular area of Google services, but I do see it's, you know, creating a business profile and it's free. This is an official Google service and it helps them improve their search engine results. So they definitely want to encourage uh, businesses to use this method. But when you sign in, and I'm sure you provide a URL, but it looks like you probably also provide other profile information. So I bet you can describe the services your business offers, contact information, addresses, and in order to get listed on Google Maps and Google Business Listings, this is probably the better way to go. So my advice to this former student is going to be, one, I'll tell them, hey, don't forget, you can always check your site by um, doing a site colon and then your domain just to kind of verify what Google does see about you or not see. But then I'm gonna suggest these two places, search.google.com and google.com slash business, sign in, create profiles, create the accounts, create the properties. And then I think within days, um, he should start seeing his small business show up on Google search engines. So that's what I wanted to share with you and have a good day.